to, for us to effectively provide services, we need to have um, female police officers in each of the police stations. That hasn't been achieved yet. late 1980s, 1989 that was in fact, um, but um, at, the, at that time police was part of the military, so the separation took place in September 2004, mm -hmm. so the, um, yeah, um, the, it all started in 1989, and starting from there uh, we have been, have been female officers in our force. The idea at that time was just to increase the number of personnel not to have female police, uh, female soldiers, let me say, at that time, but to increase the number, because uh, at that time we were very underemployed. Um, we, 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 we couldn't find enough people to fill the vacant posts in the MNDF at that time. So uh, it was basically about increasing the number, not just our female officers. Yes, to some extent, but um, again, um, the number, it doesn't tell you, I mean, it, it should be taken in the context. Because, mm -hmm. um, yes, we have a uh, 1 is to 100 ratio, uh, for every 100, 100 people living in the country, we have one police officer. But again, um, this population is uh, very much scattered um, into 200 islands. So, um, to, for us to effectively provide services, we need to have... Um, female police officers in each of the police stations. That hasn't been achieved yet. But yeah, where female officers are, are deployed, they are making our progress, they are making our good uh, results. It should be um, uh, a shift in our um, recruitment strategy. Uh, we need to, um, the, the issue here is, um, again, the population is um, scattered across um, the 200 islands. Uh, all the recruitment so far, we have been doing in the capital alone. So when we recruit capital, uh, people from the capital, they choose to work in the capital. They find it difficult to go to the islands um, for obvious reasons. So uh, what we need to do now is to start recruiting people from um, the islands where the, uh, the, uh, the police station is located so that uh, it will be um, more convenient for them to work there. Again, um, on the softer side of the organizational aspects, like the, the style, the, um, the, the you know, uh, the culture and the beliefs that we share. So um, we, coming from a military background, all the senior officers, you know, their mentality is very much military. So uh, it was, for them it was like uh, they had to change their, their military helmet to a police cap in a matter of few days. That hasn't given them enough time to change their mindset. So um, this uh, kind of military mentality is there. Not all, but uh, some um, very key people in the position, in key positions. So that has been changed. That's one of the challenges um, that, we'll, that we'll, we are facing towards achieving gender equality. Again, um, you know, uh, the, the, this goes back to the management discourse, their narratives about, you know, creating a positive change, about having our uh, female police officers. So these will be the main challenges and, and the rest follows uh, from that. survey in 2007 and one of the, uh, um, the, the results of the survey was the, the population in general, I mean the community in general, they wanted us to have female police officers serving them, especially in cases where, you know, cases of uh, sexual abuse, investigation of sexual abuse and, and um, some frontline duties. Um, so um, I would say the community 
in general, a bit positive about him and police officers, but um, the, the community that we are living in, I mean, the community in Maldives is very politically polarized at the moment. So this uh, political polarization uh, creates a barrier for school leavers, female school leavers, to join the MPS. That needs to be taken out. They'll be go um, the recruitment teams, they'll be going to uh, all these uh, islands where we need uh, more people to be recruited from. Mm -hmm. uh, these teams will go there. They will uh, conduct sort of a campaign mm -hmm. um, to, the, to everyone, like um, the community, the, go the girls who are looking for jobs, and also the, the parents of those girls. So kind of sensitizing them uh, and, and encouraging them to join the police. This will be there, and also um, the, this should come with um, a policy change about the deployment. We kind of have to, you know, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary, we will not have to shift them to or deploy them in any other at all. So that it, that will create um, a very, you know, put them in a in a difficult um, position mm -hmm. if that barrier hasn't been removed. So um, these kind of changes with. Um, um, a positive campaign in changing the, the societal attitude about police, I think, yeah, will make the difference. Um, at present, if I can give you a figure, it's um, 9%, just over 9% mm -hmm. of, the um, of the police population. But um, me, I personally, I don't want to say that our target is to achieve 33% of no, it's not that way. What I want to achieve in MPS is to have people where they can um, create or, or they can produce the best results. So if it is a position where a female officer can uh, produce the best result, we'll put, uh, we, we will put a female officer there. So if, if we go on this basis, um, it will be around 15% um, female officers it should be a minimum of 15% of female officers, minimum of 15% of male officers. The rest can depend. Uh, mostly, mostly um, female officers are in the desktops, what we call the back office jobs. But um, the recent change in our deployment policy uh, allows them to or rather encourages them to um, go to the front line. And uh, we will not be recruiting any more female officers for any of the desk jobs in the police. So if you are sworn, if, if you are joining the police as a sworn police officer, if you're a female, you'll have to be on the front line. And that's what uh, we are encouraging them to do. Uh, at the same time, what we are doing is, um, we, those who have already joined and been in the service for, for us quite some time are given a choice either to be a uh, um, non-sworn police officer to change to be a non-sworn police officer. Um, so what we are doing here is if that the position of that sworn police officer becomes vacant then we can recruit a new uh, female officer who would want to work in the front line.